We are live at the Gen Zero Media House here at ETH Denver, and I'm here with Ed Marquez, head of developer relations at Hedera. How are we doing today? I'm doing great, man. Uh, love the energy of the event, and very happy to hear that this is the last interview of the series and you know the of the week. It's been a, a very intense but fascinating week as well. I'm sure I'm honored and excited for this to be the last interview. Um, we're gonna keep it a little bit chill. We're gonna talk about the past week, kind of wrap things up as well as hear everything about the Hedera ecosystem and what you guys have going on. Love it. So tell me, what was this week like for you? What was the energy like at Biddle? Fantastic. Uh, that's one word that I would use. The other one that I would use is intense and very productive. Okay. Right. So we started with our presence at the Biddle week. So that week long hackathon that takes place with ETH Denver. But then on the Tuesday, the 25th, we had our own Hedera con. So a full day, eight hours at least, of two tracks for founders, for retail folks, for community, and then also a separate track for developers and technical folks, for engineers, for builders. So that was um, a very good event where we had very productive conversations. It was fascinating to be in front of our community, to hear what they need, what they're enjoying, where the bottlenecks are, mm. uh, and what's working well so that we can m do more of that. And then, of course, a fantastic after after party at... Was it a Meow? M yeah, Meow Wolf, you, or Meow, meow Wolf. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So that was a fantastic event as well. And then from there, we continued on with more hacking, and then the main event um, where we had a booth presence, more connections, more face-to-face -face time. We had a few workshops and talks to educate developers, to educate people about our EVM capabilities, about our AI capabilities, our capabilities for tokenization and so on. And yeah, yesterday we also wrapped the hackathon. We had fantastic turnaround, a lot of hackers, a lot of submissions, and it was great to see the, the work that folks are doing in this AI space and crypto space. Wow, okay, I have so many questions. Um, you guys are clearly top of mind in, in this cycle in this at this point and in, in just in crypto in general. Um, before I get into like the more specific questions and I'm really curious to hear about like what people what are some of the things people are building, um, what separates Hedera from other chains? I love that question and it comes to two things at the highest level. For me, it's technology and it's governance. I'm gonna start with governance, right? A lot of other networks, they may have governance models that work well, but power tends to consolidate very easily. Mm -hmm. And so we've noticed that and we've learned from that. And so in Hedera, what you have is a council of global organizations, enterprises and universities doing the governance for the network, making the decisions of governance that relate to, to that aspect and also operating the nodes of the network. And a key aspect is that those organizations come from different industries, different geographies, they represent different interests, mm. which is what you want, right? And um, if you dig another layer deeper, they're very diversified when it comes to cloud infrastructure. Mm. You know, other networks, they may have 3000 nodes, but maybe only a hundred of those or 20 of those are producing blocks. The rest of them are just validators. So that's one aspect to take into consideration. Interesting. And in Hedera, all the 30 no 33 nodes that we have right now of consensus, they're all contributing actively to that consensus process. Um, and yeah, all of those nodes are in different cl cloud providers. We in fact have a very diversified set of infrastructure for operate, operating those. And so the other part is it doesn't become old stale governance. You know, these governing entities, they come to this council and they, they can serve up to two, two three year terms, right? So you always have new governance, fresh ideas, new energy coming into that council, which is critical, you know, to make good long-term decisions. So that is the governance aspect of it. The other part of it is technology. And so there we have a very efficient next generation consensus algorithm that for the developer, what it means is much lower in fixed costs, fixed costs in, in USD, which, mm -hmm. you know, makes um, budgets and cost model work for real world use cases. You also have insane throughput with this consensus algorithm. So as a developer, you benefit from, you know, a, a new invention effectively that gives you the ability to build better user experiences that use still Web3 components, Web3 technology and blockchain. So at a high level, that's technology 
and governance. And then the other one that I would throw in the mix as well that is very important is community and ecosystem, mm. right? Like over the, we, we went open access in 2019. And since that time, we've built an incredible community of users, of builders, developers, and contributors that make this ecosystem very unique, I would say. Gotcha. No, and I'm, I'm, we're feeling it here at ETH Denver with regards to the community and the ecosystem. There's no doubt about that. So, okay. So we got the governance, we got the technology, we got the community and the ecosystem. How is that? T tell us a little bit about what people are building and what really excites you about how people are getting involved with Hedera. I love the diversity of use cases, right? Because a lot of people have this mis misconception that, oh, Hedera is mainly for like enterprise use cases. Mm. And while we work for the scale and requirements that enterprise grade applications need, mm -hmm. we also have Web3 and DGEN and startups and small use cases built on the network, right? <laughs> I love it's so, in its own category. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Um, but I mean, one of my favorite retail focused use cases is karate combat. Right, so they have this token that is part of the governance model. It's part of the user experience where you can download the app, use this token that is built on Hedera, issued on Hedera, and you can pick your favorite fighters, right? So it's, it has a user engagement aspect to it, which is really important, and also the governance side that I mentioned before. Another use case that is more on the, now we're getting into the institutional side of the house, right? It's Red Swan and, and uh, Diamond Standard. Both of those are tokenizing real estate and diamonds. Mm. And so, and I think we're just at the beginning of that trend where everything is being tokenized. Everything is being represented on chain to increase access, to increase liquidity to those assets, and also to increase the traceability and transparency of how those assets move around, right? And, and their ownership. Interesting. Where do you see the kind of the trend of like RWA? real world assets headed you, you see things starting to go more on chain it seems like absolutely i just came from the hedera booth we you know we we wrapped up the event over there and had a very fascinating conversation about tokenizing of course carbon assets carbon offsets and credits also tokenizing supply contracts you know that was a, an interesting element but also tokenizing financial instruments that was another one uh, another conversation that i had that you know you can tokenize bonds you can tokenize stocks and also even uh, debt, uh, CDPs, right? Um, debt obligations uh, or debt assets. And so it's just very fascinating the doors that are being opened by this tokenization um, narrative. And yeah, it can be from car, you know, sustainability related assets to financial assets to real estate, like you name it. I, I think we're just at the beginning of this trend of tokenization. Okay. Fascinating. I'm going to use the last little bit of this interview to kind of talk about things that are hot right now. Yeah. And there's quite a bit of that. The biggest trend we're seeing is the kind of like the convergence of AI and blockchain. So tell me what you're seeing, where you think they're going to, how they're ultimately meeting and how Hedera is playing a role in all that. Absolutely. I love that question, by the way, because these two are complementary and supplementary technologies. And I think you can see it from both angles, right? How do we use AI to improve blockchain development and how do we use blockchain to improve AI? And so you can start coming up with very compelling applications through both of those lenses. Mm. So, you know, I can go through a variety of use cases. I would say if we think about the, the ones that are most active today, probably agents, you know, it's a narrative that we're hearing and not just narrative, it, we're seeing a lot of action, a lot of solutions being built on that. I just judged the hackathon yesterday and a lot of the submissions were, how do we use agents and enable them to take actions on chain or even how do we use blockchain to improve the traceability of new LLMs and new agents that we develop. Wow. And so I, I think that intersection is gonna open incredible doors. I'm very excited about agents in 2025, You know, whether it's individual agents or swarms of agents. We saw very compelling applications where you could have, you know, an orchestrating agent and then that agent interacts with other specialized agents that can do things really well. So for you as a user, what that means is you just tell the agent what you want on the internet or maybe even in the real world and the agent goes, figures out who to talk to and it can do that really well, right? Like, and wow. so now it's, it's, it feels like the internet of the future where you just give a computer a, a command and it just makes it happen. Can you kind of guide us through, um, I'm curious because I'm, I'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around it and I'm sure there's people back 
home who are hearing all about agents is the agent kind of do they become like a digital twin and do they act like autonomously like on your behalf like how does like tell us what that actually looks like yeah great question so typically with a chatbot um you get an immediate response that is a very intelligent response right and now we're seeing these chatbots that have the ability to reason so break a very complex problem into a series of steps and then tackling those individual steps an agent is almost like a next level iteration of that right where it has a level of reasoning a level of autonomy and a level of action right and so i think that's another key aspect when it comes to elements that autonomous aspect of it but also the ability to take action mm -hmm. and you know that that comes in in different flavors actions could be related to data action could be related to on-chain actions but yes now you have an intelligent reasoning entity that can you know hopefully guide you in the right direction and even make decisions on your own behalf so i would think of it as you know a next next iteration of a simple chatbot mm -hmm. something that is a little bit smarter and more capable you know to to do things on your behalf and how do you see the economy um developing around these agents are they going to be getting paid like with the wallet like and and also what role is Hedera going to play in that these agents are actually getting jobs right now right um and but who and who owns these agents that are getting these jobs is it me is it like the company like how and you know, are they, is it everybody and it's a, you know, agents could create spawn agents. Right. And so oh, I, I think it's, it's fascinating. So mm -hmm. you could issue or spawn your own agent that does jobs on the internet for you. And guess how those agents are paid. It's not fiat necessarily, exactly. right? Okay. Agents, you know, they can have crypto wallets. Every, everything that we transfer through the blockchain is native to the internet. Agents are native to the internet. And so they have access to real world value by combining AI technology and crypto. And so, yeah, I could have an agent, you could have an agent, that agent goes out there, finds jobs that relate to its core competencies, the things that it's really good at, and it can, you know, uh, create real world value and be recognized economically uh, because of that. And so wow. companies are doing that as well. They're spawning agents. Uh, agents are spawning agents. Like uh, this space is moving really fast. So, okay, I wasn't going to go there, but we're, we're there talking about agents. These agents are going to get paid and these agents are going to get smarter. Are you at all concerned about these agents becoming too smart and now they have capital that they can utilize? So where do you feel, how do you feel about that in general? I think it's gonna make us ultimately more productive, right? I, I completely hear the angle that maybe agents are gonna displace human talent and that has been true for every technological revolution. But typically we find something more compelling to do with our time or we find a way to use those new technologies to make us more productive right? right to do more in the same amount of time so i think we have interesting options here either we free up our time and we don't do as much or we continue working as much as we do but we get a lot more done in that same time okay. right and i think those are the two big possibilities that we have in front of us and maybe a spectrum between those two but i am by nature optimistic about technology about progress and so I think we're just going to be way more productive by learning how to work with these agents, learning how to create with these agents and capitalize on the value that these agents create for right. themselves and for society at large. Okay. I like the optimism. Yeah. Um, you're getting me excited. The, the doom and optimism for me, it, it depends on the day, you know, <laughs> it's, it's back yeah. and forth. Yeah. And I think, I think the doom, you know, it's valid, but let's recognize it as a risk. And I think there's very smart people be, that are aware of that and, working on those problems to make sure that we don't end up in the doom vision Look, and hopefully win. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I don't want to, I mean, Musk just had a podcast the other day. So to pivot, um, speaking about hype stuff, strategic reserve, tell us about it. Do you think Hedera is going to make it in there? How do you feel about it? I'm very optimistic about that announcement. I, you know, I see a new era for crypto in terms of the possibilities that are open by having a friendlier, uh, set of policies and perception, you know, at the highest level levels of power. Um, I think that it's very good for the space to hear about that strategic crypto reserve. I, I won't comment. I don't have any information on whether HBAR and Hedera will, will end up there, but I do like how U.S. tokens, U.S. networks are being favored and have a, a good opportunity to end up in that, in that um, reserve. With that said, I mean, 
Hedera and HBAR, the native token of the network, have been in the US for a long time. I mean, we're, we're US native and yeah, the, the last uh, few years have been, ha have been difficult to navigate given the lack of clarity, but I think we, we're optimistic about the new rules and regulations that may come up that may incentivize enterprises, startups, small business and individuals to be more open to adopting and using this technology. Absolutely. This has been this has been incredible. I you got my mind racing a little bit, which I always appreciate. If that's what I'm feeling at the end of an interview, I, I you know I always get excited. Um, how can people get more involved with Hedera? How can people learn about the ecosystem? What, one thing I want to clarify about the Hedera ecosystem is Hedera is the network, the technology itself, and the governance model, right? That that council. Then I work for Hashgraph doing developer relations for Hedera. And Hashgraph is that entity that does all the marketing mm -hmm. and engineering initiatives for the Hedera network. Okay. Then we also have the foundation, right? And that is the ecosystem development organization that drives retail use cases, that drives integrations, infrastructure, and a lot more. And so we work very closely together to advance the interests of the Hedera network. And so, yeah, those are two entities that um, you can get involved with, you know, whether you're interested in building, whether you're interested in learning the technology. And so the first step that I would recommend for people is to follow Hedera on X if you're not doing that already. And then our DMs are always open. So if you want to contact me or, you know, uh, engage with our Hedera community, we'll point you in the right direction. Whether you want to talk to uh, a fund manager or a developer relations person or an engineer, you know, our doors are always open and I have a community friend here behind the scenes. And so we're trying to do more with the community, more initiatives, more opportunities to be contributors and actively engage with our whole ecosystem. Okay, and last question. I did see that there was some NFT situation being offered to the community. Anything you wanna tell us? Yeah, so at HederaCon, we revealed uh, NFTs that we wanna have for our community to facilitate engagement and activity in the ecosystem through these NFTs. And so the first one that we rolled out is the NFT starter developer, uh, the Hedera starter develop developer. And the way you can get one of those NFTs is by completing a technical challenge, but it's, it's quite fun, right? You can actually create your own NFT on the test net. And then the, once you're able to do that, you can uh, submit a couple of credentials, we'll verify that, and then you're whitelisted to claim that NFT. And the cool thing is the utility that those NFTs have for the community. So we're using projects from the ecosystem, like Plaza's, you know, from Kabila, to give access that is token gated for content, for uh, communications, for conversations. And so it's a really great way to get our community familiar with the technology, but also engaged and, you know, sharing ideas, sharing uh, possibilities with the rest of the ecosystem through these NFTs. And so the great thing too, is that they're soul bound, right? So, oh, no you know, way. once you get it, uh, you're part of the community forever with that wallet. Wow. And so really a, a great thing to, um, you know, do for, for the community, I think. And we're going to have more collections, right? We just came out with this starter collection, then we're going to have more for enthusiasts and for advanced developers. So plenty of opportunities coming in that area that relate to community engagement. Super exciting. And how do I get involved? So if you go to hedera.com slash community, we'll have all the details of the initiatives that we're doing and also these details about the NFT collections that we'll have. Thank you so much for coming by. And I hope you guys get some rest after this crazy week. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. Brought to you by Hedera and Foresight Ventures. Hey, what's up? If you want to survive, you got to build a house. Ladies and gentlemen, the back of the Gen Z Media House. Oscar, thanks so much for joining us today.